Okay, let's take a look at the markets, excuse me, before we go to Robert Hogue and talk about the housing market in this country. There is the S&P TSX Composite Index trading at 22,034 points. That's about 53 points or so away from an all-time record high closing value, a bit further away from 22,213 points, which was the all-time intraday high reached in April of 2022. The S&P 500 now at 5,219 points. And as we indicated earlier, the weakness today, uh, relative weakness is in the tech stocks. The NASDAQ composite is down very slightly. Here's a look at uh, some, some stocks that are moving on the uh, S&P TSX Composite Index. The first one is uh, TD Bank. It's one of the most influentials uh, today, has been an upside uh, gainer uh, through the course of the uh, morning. It's the top upside contributor to the rally in the S&P TSX Composite with a gain of uh, 1%, as you can see. That translates to, to 10 points on the TSX, 10 of the 128-point rally on the TSX. Barrick Gold is another one. Barrick is having a good day. It's up by about 4%. It's a good day for the gold stocks generally. We'll take a look at the price of gold in just a second. Uh, there's Barrick. Uh, we'll take a look at the price of gold, uh, and uh, we'll take a look at Agnico Eco Mines as well. There's gold. It's up uh, by about half a percentage point into record high territory. And uh, we'll take a look at Agnico Eco Mines as well before we go to our guest. AEM is the ticker symbol there. It's also one of the top influentials on the upside today. Well, let's go to an expert in the housing market and continue our, our uh, spotlight on that theme. Last month marked the first time since August that home prices in Canada did not decline on a month-over-month -month basis. But as we head towards the spring market and with potential Bank of Canada rate cuts on the horizon, will prices rise again? Our next guest expects there will be a standoff between buyers and sellers in the spring housing market. Let's bring in an expert. He's Robert Hogue, Assistant Chief Economist at RBC. Robert, thanks a a lot for joining us. Uh, how, how do you see the spring housing market shaping up here in Canada? Well, it might be a little bit spotty depending on where you are across Canada. There we definitely see some signs that uh, some markets are, are picking up uh, and others are keep going, like uh, Calgary, for example. Uh, but the idea, at the end of the day, when we look at things that on an aggregate basis, so we expect that you know, the recovery has probably you now started, but it might be gradual at first. We don't expect a big pop in activity uh, taking place over the coming months. What is uh, RBC's uh, base case for the Bank of Canada and what it does for the remainder of this year? Right. We, we do expect that it'll, it'll start cutting in, in June and then proceed with 100 basis points over the second half of this year and a further 100 basis point uh, cuts uh, into 2025. So it, you know, the implication for the, the housing market is that uh, you know, probably as we head into or get closer to that first cut, we might see a little bit more activity, but really to make a, a, a meaningful difference for uh, many home buyers that who are sitting on the sidelines right now, now we would need to see a, you know, a, a series of cuts. This is not just the first cut that will do it for them, but it's, it's once we get like a full 100 basis point in, that's going to start to make a material difference for them. You say uh, in some notes uh, that you've shared that you think sellers will come into this upcoming um, spring uh, housing season with firm price expectations. So there, there was, they'll be stubborn on what they expect to get for their house and b potential buyers will be very much budget constrained and certainly higher interest rates have done that and will have limited capacity to bid up prices. So uh, talk to us again about the dynamics you see at play in this market. Right, because it's like no, we know that many uh, uh, sellers have taken a pass at the uh, fall market. You now decided you know, what because of the uh, activity and demand was so soft at the time that they probably have put their bets on on the, the spring market. So 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 those sellers are likely, to, or more sellers are likely to come over the the springtime, and we're starting to see new listings, for example, making their their way up. Uh, but because uh, you know, those sellers more than likely are under some of them are under uh, some pressure uh, to uh, uh, to sell at certain price points and they, they may not have that uh, much flexibility on, on prices whereas on the demand side with uh, buyers again as, as you just pointed out with interest rate you know, remaining high 
uh, and uh, you know, affordability being so uh, so difficult for so many uh, uh, the buyers that they, they don't have that much uh, room to maneuver either. So, so that's why we think there could, there could be a bit of a standoff between buyers and sellers over the, uh, the coming months. The Prime Minister has just today announced measures uh, aimed at, uh, at, at making life a bit easier for renters. Among those changes is um, uh, requiring that a, uh, a renter who has paid on time for a documented period of time would have that uh, positive track record uh, included in his or her credit score when they uh, seek a mortgage to buy a, a home. Do you have any, any thoughts on that move? Well, I mean, I think the, the aim there is to set uh, tenants uh, or current renters up for uh, the, being able to eventually buy a uh, buy home and, and ease the way there. Uh, I'm not sure that this is going to be necessarily a game changer for the housing market, but it's one of the uh, potential many uh, uh, initiatives that are uh, either deployed or being explored right now to uh, address this uh, 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 the affordability crisis that we have across Canada. The, the big issue of course, is supply at a time when the Canadian population is, is surging because of uh, different f forms of in-migration, either uh, immigration or uh, foreign students or temporary workers and so on. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts and the thoughts of your colleagues at RBC at some of the policy options that might work to increase supply? To increase supply, all we need to to uh, not to grow the uh, the building industry's capacity to build a lot more. So you now we need to get. Uh more workers or train more workers. And when you look, you know, we just had many announcements on, on the immigration side uh, lately. Uh, we need to keep those programs or to beef up those programs to, to get more uh, uh, trade skills and uh, those uh, people able to work in, in a construction industry. We need uh, you know, to, to really grow the capacity. That also includes uh, you know, finding ways to increase productivity in, the, in that sector. Uh, because the, the the number of houses that or homes that we need to build, they're they're not just high, but they're significantly higher than what we've ever produced in Canada. So uh, we need definitely need to grow the, uh, the the building industry's capacity.